this video, I'm walking you through how to do static wall pullovers. If you haven't done static wall before, please watch my video on static wall before you do the pullovers. So I'm going to be walking you predominantly through the pullover movement in this video. I'm not going to go through the ins and outs of static wall. So do make sure you understand that position before you upgrade and add the shoulder demand on top as well. So I'm getting myself into static wall position and I've also got my yoga block and a couple of cushions to hand because I will never do my Goscu exercises without a few things to hand just in case my head and shoulders tell me that they need them. So I'm scooching my bum into the wall. I'm not walking you through static wall position as I said so I'm not going to get tempted into over explaining that when there is a perfectly good video elsewhere that you can watch, but do make sure you understand it. My feet are pulling back, my quads are tight, my pelvis is flat to the floor completely so it's not tucking under and lifting away, and my lower back and my rib cage are also flat to the floor. If I felt like my rib cage wasn't flat to the floor, I would either scooch myself away from the wall slightly or I would put a pillow under my head. And for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to put a pillow under my head because it might encourage people who need to take the modification to take the modification rather than barrel through and do the exercise incorrectly because they're not using the sort of support that their body needs. So we want your rib cage to stay flat. That is an absolutely intrinsic part of static wall pullovers. So the bottom of my rib cage is flat to the floor, as is my lower back and as is my pelvis. None of those three parts of my body are going to change as I pull, or sorry, as I lift my arms up towards the ceiling, interlink my fingers together into the kind of tight grip. I'm keeping my palms firmly together so I'm not letting the base of my hands come apart throughout the exercise. The palms are firmly together. My arms stretch upwards towards the ceiling. So I'm really going for length through my arms more than anything. I really want to feel like I'm kind of pulling my arms away from my body. Keeping my quads tight, keeping my elbows straight, keeping my wrists firm and keeping my fingers firmly gripping. We are going to slowly move our arms back behind us, only as far as we can go, until we feel like we're going to lift our rib cage up off the floor, until we feel like we might start bending our elbows back down towards the ground, or until we feel like we're curling our wrists into a funny position or taking our hands apart, okay? So, I'll run you through that again. Wrists, sorry, wrists dry up towards ceiling, fingers that firmly linked, palms of hands stay together throughout, the bottom of your thumbs are not coming apart from one another. The elbows are straight. The hinge point is your shoulder, it's not your rib cage, it's not your elbows, and it's not your wrists. So we are slowly moving our arms backwards, all the while trying to go for length through the arms, because that will stop you from bending your elbows, really, 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 really slowly the first time you do it, and you're feeling the point where you feel like the bottom of your rib cage wants to lift up off the floor. When you've got to that point, you stop, and you bring your arms back up to the ceiling, okay? So the rib cage is really important here. If your rib cage is lifting, you're not moving your shoulders, you're moving your rib cage. So we're slowly doing the same thing again, watching for the rib cage, keeping the elbows long. We're not bending our elbows, trying to get our hands to touch the floor because we're never going to open up our shoulders. Elbows are long, hands are together. And we come back up again. The quads stay tight, the feet are obviously staying tight and working. And this is what static wall pullovers looks like. Can you see how slowly I am going? how mindful I am being. I'm not rushing through the exercise. I'm not letting my ego take over so that I'm trying to touch the wall, sorry, the floor with my hands. If I try and touch the floor with my hands, 
I'll be very likely to bend my elbows and touch that, uh, my hands on the floor, but I'm not opening up my armpits. It's all about this angle of the shoulder here, opening up. This is where we want to increase that angle. If you're just trying to touch the floor with your hands, you're not opening up your shoulders, okay? So don't worry about touching the floor. Worry about elbows straight, length through arms, keeping that rib cage grounded like so. Go slowly, remember to breathe in and out of your nose, into your belly, and also watch, although this is only gonna be, this will be more likely to happen if you don't have a pillow. Also watch that you're not tilting your head back when you're trying to do the movement. So if we lock out compensation from the rib cage or from the elbows or from the wrists, you might notice that your neck tries to compensate by kind of tilting backwards like this. So you're almost trying to give yourself a double chin with your head. That's also going to help you with that grounding through your ribs. And you're doing that type of movement nice and slowly. This is the pivot point. It's not your wrists bending and being weak. It's not the elbows bending and it's not the rib cage flaring up and down off the floor. So that's static wall pullovers.